I'm Brent Reed, and this is an all-new Battle Rup. Today, in 1945, the Detroit Tigers played the Philadelphia A's, where they went 24 innings and finished the game in a tie. I guess they just said, forget about it, and walked off the field. <laughs> also, in 1975, Billy Martin was fired from the Texas Rangers, beginning a new string of career with the New York Yankees being hired and fired constantly. This is an all-new Battle Rup. <laughs> Second, and today's show we're going to focus on the National League preview. Tomorrow, baseball returns. Then, guys, yeah, celebrate, celebrate! <laughs> but <laughs> baseball will be back. With that being said, we need to touch on the National League and preview it. But we start every show with three up and three down. Three of the biggest news stories going around. Starting with instant replay, baseball has added some new angles to instant replay. Uh, to help out umpires during this pandemic. They're going to be limited as far as how many uh, camera crews and people are allowed at the stadium. So now they're going to be more angles to help with foul balls, uh, <clears throat> home runs, catches, and stuff like that. So it gives the umpires a little bit of a break and gives us, if you have the replay, use it. I hate instant replay, but if you're going to use it, you might as well use it to your best of your ability. And the whole point is to get it right. Baseball seems to be the one sport that's still struggling with instant replay a little bit. Moving on, the Blue Jays need a home. What? They've been kicked out of their nest in Canada because Canada is not allowing anyone from America in this country during this pandemic. So, what do the Toronto Blue Jays have to do? Well, right now they're in conversation with the Pittsburgh Pirates or potentially sharing their stadium in Pittsburgh. I believe what the Blue Jays should have done was just taken a minor league stadium and played there. No fans are coming anyway, and a smaller stadium is better to control people who come in and out. Now, the one upside if Canada would have let them play is that their stadium is built to hold people as far as the players and their weight team because they have a hotel. So they could have created their own little bubble system there. But unfortunately, Canada said, no way, Jose. We don't want you. So hopefully the Blue Jays will find somewhere to play in this whole crazy mess. And then and then finally, wrapping it up, Dr. Anthony Fauci is going to throw out the first pitch for the Washington Nationals on their opening day game this Thursday. We know he's the guy who's basically telling everybody how to live through this whole pandemic. And even though sometimes he's being discredited, maybe the smartest man in the room. He is a Nets fan, so the Nets feel like they're going to reward him. And allow him to throw out the first pitch. So that's pretty cool there. See, guys, science can be cool. All right, let's go in now. Let's go inside the clubhouse and discuss the National League and preview the teams that win in divisions, the players to watch for. And then in the last segment, we're going to talk, we're going to go to the land of fantasy as we talk fantasy baseball. Are you ready? Let's go to the clubhouse, shall we? All right, so the National League, um, just like it's going to be a lot different this year. For the first time in the history of the game, there will be DH in the National League. For some teams, they should look to take advantage of this. The teams that think they take advantage of this are the teams that will win their division. Teams that have an, um, have a roster that has real good depth. So let's touch on it. So who wins the East? Who wins the Central? Who wins the West? Let's make this quick. I got Philadelphia winning the East. Why? Because Philly, I think with Joe Girardi in the short season, with the type of talent that they have, is going to mold the, that crop of young, mixed fuse of veterans, put them together and say, let's do this, and let's go out and win this division. Bryce Harper is going to have to play like a man possessed and will potentially, I think, be the MVP this year because he will lead this team and pull this team forward. You had Didi. And Gorius, a veteran, a guy who's been to the playoffs with the Yankees, you add him and you let him, he can eat a DH if you want him to. You got another group of guys that you can kind of throw in there. Um, Andrew McCutcheon here and there. But they have enough depth, and their pitching starting lineup is good enough to get them the wins that they need around 40-ish to get them over the hump. The Central, St. Louis. 
Uh, St. Louis just finds ways to win. I wanted to say Milwaukee was going to win it. I wanted to say the Cubs was going to win it. I wanted to say the Reds was going to win it. I don't think the Reds are there yet. I think the Reds will make it, but I don't think they're there. I think St. Louis wins a division for a second year in a row. That team, that, that franchise, that's what they do. They just win. And then Paul Goldsmith, Goldsmith has another fantastic year because he is the offense. He drives that offense. But if they can get production from their pitchers and Dakota Hudson and Miles Michaelis, you will find, they will find themselves maybe the number two seed going into the playoffs because the number one seed and the winner of the West will be the Dodgers. The Dodgers have the best rotate the best starting lineup in the National League head to toe. And you added Mookie Betts, a former MVP, who's though his only challenge is gonna have to play in that bigger ballpark. But well, maybe he hasn't had as many home runs, but now the guy gets on base more. He's more of a uh, he's more of a threat because he's got that speed. And defensively he brings so much to that team that um and then all they need is Clayton Kershaw and Walker uh, Bell uh, Lager to in his third, fourth full season to just be a one-two punch. Because if they would have had uh, David Price, they would have, in my opinion, be in better position to just cook with it all. But the Dodgers may have the best record in all. I know a lot of people think Arizona's going to be the better team. I know they think the Padres are going to step up. Dodgers, that's their division. To win and to lose. Now, who are the teams that are going to join them come postseason? Why not? The Washington Nationals, the defending World Series champions. You're saying, well, Brent, why won't they win the division? I think because they're going to have a little uh, hangover from winning the World Series. Now, they have the ability to win that division. They got a, a one, they got, they got a three-headed pitching monster with the law offices of Scherzer, Strasburg, and Pat, uh, what's it? Pat- Patrick? You have a pitching staff that just can't go nine. You got one guy who can throw the ball, but the other is just terrible. Well, then you need to call the law firm of Strasburg, Scherzer, and Corbin. You need a pitcher that shows no emotion, but it give you seven, Steven Strasburg. You need an old school pitcher that loves to go complete games and sometimes throws no hitters, Matt Scherzer. And when in doubt, a very good number three and Patrick Corbin. So, call the law offices of SSP, Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin, at 1-800-Scherzer-Strasburg-Corbin. I want to say his name is SSP. You got that, uh, bro, I'm sorry. You got that uh, law office, but not to mention they added Mike Dimes, I mean, uh, Eric Dimes, a big power hitter from the Milwaukee Brewers, who brings so much offense to that team. They lost, but they lost in Anthony Rendon. They gained in Mark Dimes and in uh, Sterling Castro. Two guys who could give you 20 plus home runs, but Sterling Castro's defense is gonna be good and he gets on base. He's a, he hits around, he flirts with 300 mark, which means he's a guy that can get on. And then Times playing first base, splitting it with um, Henry Kendrick, giving Kendrick a lot of rest. In fact, Kendrick will DH now. You're really giving them more offensive firepower. Making an argument that they may win the East, but I think Philly's got it. Moving on, the next team in the Cubs. Cubs, I think, have enough talent, especially led by, um, uh, uh, shoot, I can't think of his name right now, but they got enough talent to kind of get them in. I don't see them going far, uh, but with the new manager at the helm, they're not listening to Joe Madden and his cool Miami, Miami, Miami anymore. They're just probably going to get back to the basics and just play ball. For, uh, then who wins, Mets or the Reds? I got either one of them kind of get in there. If the Mets' pitching lineup performs, if they can get enough out of Jacob DeGrom, if they can get Rick Porcellus to pitch like Rick Porcellus four years ago, they can find them. And then if they can get Marcus, um, uh, was it Mark, Marcus, um, shoot, Pitcher from Toronto. I'll put his name on the bottom. But if they can get him, the three of them could be a very good to excellent rotation. They could get that team in the playoffs because it's going to take the Mets' offense. They're going to need Jeff McNeely to have a bounce back year. They're going to need uh, Pete Alfonso not to have to fall into the sophomore slump. And then now with the DH, now you get, you allow Cespedes to do all he wants. That's just hit. And you can get. Um, 
Robinson Cano to just hit, and you give those guys breaks, you give them time to rest. The Mets got a good squad, but the Reds have a better pitching staff. The Reds with Sonny Gray and um, somebody else I wrote down. I got notes everywhere, guys. Pay me no mind. Got notes everywhere. And Luis Castillo, you're going to find the Reds trying to make a run for it. Can they in that tough central division? It's going to be hard because they got to play Milwaukee. They got to play the Cubs. They got to play St. Louis. Process of elimination, somebody's going to lose to somebody. So I think the Mets get in there. And I think finally the Braves slip in that final spot. I don't think the Braves added enough in the offseason to get let them defend that, that, that East. In fact, if the Braves don't show up, maybe that last spot goes to the Reds. I'm just saying. But those are my picks. And that's who I think will win it all. The best team is going to be the Dodgers, but will they be the team in the World Series? No. I didn't pick a World Series team last week for the American League. But I think the National League, I think if the Mets get in, it's the Mets' work. The Mets have the pitching to get them over that hump. And I think the Mets go back to the World Series. Mark my words. All right, guys. Let's take a step over. We're going to visit my good friend, Reverse Brett Reed as we go to the land of fantasy and we talk fantasy baseball. Oh, should I do it? All right. Welcome to the land of fantasy. And in the world of fantasy baseball, we discuss who are the players you should look for. I'm going to talk like that for this whole segment. <laughs> anyway, some guys that you should need to draft if you can draft right away. Uh, Atlanta is Ronald Cool Jr. Should be your first pick. He's a bona fide uh, points giving machine. The kid is a beast. He can give you points. He's a monster. He will be the guy that you really need to lead off and that you need as your number one pick. Moving on, uh, Chris Yelich, former MVP. A guy I really like as far as just numbers in bunches and can get the job done if you need him to. Um, Tell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Believe it or not, I think this kid has got a future. Not with the Diamondbacks. He'll probably get traded one day. But he is a stud. He's going to give you the numbers that you need to get your team to a winning position. He's not the guy, but he's a guy you should want to draft. Pitchers, you're going to need pitchers. Steven Strasburg, uh, Steven Strasburg and Jacob DeGrom, two must-haves. Innings eaters, num, 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 num. they love eating up some innings. And they're going to get you a lot of strikeouts. And then the, the problem with DeGrom is he won't get you a, a buttload of wins. So you may want to get a pitcher that can get you some. You may want a pitcher to have behind him that plays with a team that's going to score a lot of runs. So look at teams like the Dodgers. Look at teams like the Yankees. Look at teams like the Nationals. Look at teams like the, um, the Atlanta Braves. Uh, teams that give their, give their pitchers runs support. And then you, you can, then you can kind of have DeGrom. If not, if DeGrom is your sole air pitcher, you're in trouble because the Mets, for some reason, don't give him runs. Now, guys you need to look for if those guys aren't available, well, Pete Alfonso. Enough said. Last year, the guy was a stud. If he backs up his sophomore season, he will give uh, you just exactly what you need and can help carry you. Uh, Cody Bellinger, why was he on the other list? Because I doubt he's going to be available. He's one of the best players in the National League. If not the, one of the best players in all of baseball. So, when it comes to Cody, if, you, if he's available, grab him. Uh, Bryce Harper, same rule applies. The problem is Bryce don't give you as many, his, his home runs and his powers there. But as far as, and he gets on base because he walks a lot. But he also strikes out a lot too. So just make sure whoever, uh, that you have a nice balance. If Bryce is one of you guys, make sure you have a balance. And then I like Eric Dines as a, as a good, solid guy that you just keep the whole year. And he's just going to be um, he's gonna be consistent. Consistency will get you to the finals. Consistency will get you to a championship. Consistency will keep it all done. Right? Whew. Out of the fantasy world. It was crazy in there. Everything was backwards. I was wearing a med shirt. Ah! Anyway, thank you all for watching. It's been fun. Um, baseball is back tomorrow. Oh, my God. This is this is exciting. I cannot wait. Um, we will do a quick, small uh, post 
uh, baseball show after the Yankees Nationals game, giving you my take on how it is to watch a game without fans, even though I'm a fan of the game. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. Next week, we'll be back to talk about the first week of baseball and break down for the first time ever. We will give the National League and American League players of that respectable week. So, yay! Uh, see you guys uh, next week. Have a lot of fun and be safe out there and please wear your mask. Deuces. <laughs>